question is, which is better, testosterone and an AI or stacking compounds? Warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. So another way of rewording this question is why would you use an AI? And you'd use an AI to control estrogen. That estrogen can get out of control if you're trying to use testosterone as a primary agent. That testosterone is your parent hormone, a sex hormone that men have that's used as for basically growing muscle by most people that use testosterone or for HRT. So we've got two communities. We've got the bodybuilder community and we've got the HRT community. The HRT community is, as it states, hormone replacement therapy. The goal of HRT or TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, is to replace testosterone. So for testosterone replacement therapy, most people go to a TRT or HRT online clinic and get treated through telemedicine. Some people go to their primary care physician. Neither of these are aptly suited for this task. And they're not using the best drugs for the purpose of anything. Testosterone is great if you're trying to replace testosterone. Testosterone provides estrogen and DHT, which are byproducts of testosterone. Some would say that testosterone is a pro-hormone to estrogen and a pro-hormone to DHT. Estrogen is a female hormone, DHT is a male hormone. The ratios determine secondary sexual characteristics. We're gonna assume that the person using these drugs is a man and that he wishes to stay a man. He does not wish to intentionally transition into a female. Once your testosterone gets too high, it'll convert to estrogen and estrogen can be bad if it gets too high also. You get side effects, most notably gynecomastia, but it's not limited to gynecomastia. But the point is the normal range is 20 to 40, although it can be beneficial to have higher than that for purposes of converting your GH into IGF-1. If you're an HRT community person, daily injections with an insulin syringe, one of these little guys, this is what you're supposed to use, Everyone might say otherwise, I disagree with them strongly. And you do 20 to 40 milligrams. And there is a big misconception that sub-Q is better than intramuscular for estrogen conversion. This is faulty. That the reason why that is, is because they're comparing one shot a week intramuscular to seven shots a week, you're dividing the dose into seven, doing everyday injections sub-Q, and they're seeing that the everyday injections sub Q has less estrogen conversion than once a day intramuscular. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the director of human performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. So daily injections is absolutely critical for every single person, no matter what, and there is no excuse otherwise. And for reiteration, the test plus the AI is not the best option because the AI is gonna crush your estrogen. It's very hard to control. Now, extemisane or aromasin, they're 65% suppression. Again, I don't wanna, I wanna be able to very, very, very fine tune my estrogen knob so I can get the most out of the GH. And if someone isn't using GH and their goal is to grow or be a bodybuilder, you're really fucking yourself. That That is a terrible idea. Using the HRT and TRT models is like fighting a battle with two hands and one leg tied behind your back. You've got to hop on one leg and try to headbutt without losing your balance. And it's almost impossible. One thing I will say is that endpoint users aren't targeted. That all of the individuals who are at the actual law enforcement level realize that this situation is pretty bad and that they themselves are in the same boat as you. The National Guard, the firemen, the police officers, the politicians, they all are also investigating HRT and TRT and they're realizing the standard of care is not great. 
And so there's going to be a change in the next five or 10 years, I think, just like there was with marijuana. There will be a decriminalization of these wonderful medications like Primo and Masteron. People will not have to use toxic options like Winstrol and Anadrol. They can use safer, cleaner medications like Primo and Masteron. Your body, your choice. Applied to men, not just women. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, there is a full length version available. If you didn't like it, you're in our word. This is just the summary, just the tip, if you will. This is the tip of the iceberg of knowledge that I have bestowed upon you. Please accept and absorb the rest of this iceberg. Now, a lot of people are selling this stuff. They are selling courses on the material. This is free. You don't have to pay if you click the link. It's not a funnel that you're not going to get duped into giving your credit card or your email. You just get to watch the video. If you like the video, watch the whole series, watch it in order, the how to grow. There's numbers for a reason. Hopefully you completed preschool and you can count. So you watch them in order for a reason. That's why they're filmed in that reason, in that order, because they go from most important to least important. And as you suspected, the PED videos at the end, I guarantee you the answer to your problems is not more steroids. It's better lifting. If it's missing, it's probably because you're watching a censorship platform switch to one of the uncensored platforms to see the PED video. I believe it's video five and I believe it's video 10 are not in the censored platform. So you are in a censored environment if you're missing those. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to get a consult by clicking the link in the description box.